Sam Molinay from Richmond, Virginia, and I'm an anarchist. And today, I'm here at the Compass once more at VCU, outside of the, you know, circle of uh, free speech dome to spread the message of freedom. So with that, hopefully you enjoy this content of the video today. Share and subscribe if you can, and see you guys at the victory party. Take good care. The government wouldn't threaten to send you to another cage if you didn't pay your taxes. Right. Right. So that's yeah, the hidden violence really behind government. Anymore. And that this organization, the Matrix, only knows how to solve problems in one way. And that's to like thread up and use the violence to solve any problems. Versus already the plurality of non-violent solutions that us three here, my two friends here, already share. Three of us on I see that's, um, you know, it's a good point. But practically, well, how does that play out? Okay, so you you look at government objectively and what it is that they have, right? Uh, they they have monopolized the services I want. I still want security. I still want law. I still want judges and courts and roads and currency. But these are the area government has monopolized. Mm -hmm. These are the areas the government has monopolized in the, in the sense that they don't allow you the freedom to to cancel, unsubscribe, withdraw your payment plan, or even have the freedom then to compete against those services and provide a better service that's not going to be harmful and abusive to you, the consumer. Right. So I just want. So that's the hidden violence behind government. They have a violent monopoly that no one's allowed to compete. So, but the I, the alternative I see to that is yeah. um, the being that we do live in a capitalistly minded, you know, state. Um, if with, without the government, wouldn't the co uh, corporate um, greed and such okay, replace yeah, 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 that yeah. to an even like more extent? Oh, that's a great question. Um, extent. So what exists today? It's not a free market, it's a state-controlled market, right? Uh, corporations cease to exist when there's no government. All government is, all corporation is, is a piece of paper granted by the government, backed and enforced by the government, to allow CEOs to escape personal liability for their actions, right? Mm -hmm. Oil spill off the coast of Alaska. CEOs didn't lose their money, lose their house, didn't go to prison, they did, nothing happened to them. Yeah. Yeah. They're then able, because they're limited liability corporation, immunity from that, they would offset the cost to employees by lowering your salaries to the consumers by raising consumer prices, right? So without government, there's no corporation. There's no Frankenstein science monster that they have created, right? So you don't believe without government there wouldn't be like, corporations couldn't exist without government? Right. But because government itself is a corporation, it's immune from its own actions, right? They have personal life, uh, immunity from, from being sued. But if you take away that rule of law that even in a small way limits them, like just to the extent of what they can do to people at, the, at a very basic, I mean, like there are is like a minimum wage set. Like you can only there will go be no minimum wage, no minimum law. It'll be in the same way like Netflix tried to abuse this price system by trying to raise the prices overnight last year, and people are like forget that, cancel, unsubscribe, go to food. But if there's no minimum wage or anything, doesn't that open your doesn't that open up to like the everyday man to being exploited by corporations because if there's no other option right they can say well you can do this you job for like three dollars an hour and what you're gonna do because that's that's the present state of things it goes back to the way how it would be without a minimum wage so minimum wage discriminates against the youth discriminates against people who don't have the skills to to measure up to that particular uh, pay system for example like if I was like 13 I can't work right they discriminate me because of my age right I have to wait until I'm 16 I have to get permission I have to beg for strangers to be but able to work but, but when I'm 13 wall, but, but, but I can't build up the skills I can't build up my resume I have to wait until I'm 18 so I can't build up when I'm 13 maybe cleaning up pools lawn mowing or something like that maybe I'm worth five dollars then maybe when I'm 15 I'm worth eight dollars and that continues to go up I continue to grow those skills but government hampers handicaps everyone and says you have to wait until you're 18 right they say for example like someone's like like uh cleaning the pool sort of cost 15 dollars right ten dollars an hour that's an easy job anyone could do right so you measure that to the effect of the efficiency of what you can do with that that someone's is capable to do that so it discriminates all around it even prevents people from having jobs but there's there's like a, not allowing a 13 year old to work works in, you can limit them growing their skills but at the same time it also prevents them from being exploited into the workforce at a younger age you find exploitation if there is no other economic way for, if there isn't like a government to say well these kids have to go to school till this amount of age they have to you know go through this basic education system they can't enter the workforce until X amount of years how, how like if they if like a corporations would you know take over things and if they weren't any government yeah. and you know it was just yeah. businesses yeah. working independently yeah. free market there's nothing to keep children from being educated or being or, or being economically
forced into but, like but see, jobs. But just identified a really good problem. The problem is a lot of people can't have jobs, oh, but I'll where do they go? Who taught them those skills? Exactly. Public indoctrination schools. They're, even the public indoctrination schools, the monopoly schools, it's failing children today, <laughs> right? Anytime you have a monopoly on anything, the cost continues to rise and the quality continues to depreciate. That's why yeah. teachers now have to cheat for their own students for standardized testing, right? Yeah. You don't allow the freedom to create better schools and say, hey, this is a bully-free environment. I thought you know the parents you personally. Go to you, can, you can choose your own teachers. You can choose the subjects that you want to study on, right? Teach real, real skills, real knowledge. Right? Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. And if, but that's we're stepping a little bit forward. I'm gonna step back for, for a second. Like in the beginning, we're we're talking about the initiation of violence, right? That that's wrong and immoral, right? This is a universal principle known as the non-aggression principle. You universalize the notion that it's wrong and immoral for anyone to initiate that violence, no matter what title you call yourself, what color costume you wear, green or blue, or what you know, piece of metal or piece of paper you hold up. It, you, doesn't dif differentiate the fact that you're still another human being, mm -hmm. that only individual people exist, right? Okay. So you universalize the principle, like you universalize like the theory of gravity, like thermodynamics, and it applies all places at all time, right? So, but you see then what government is, is this a small group of individuals who claim the authority to initiate violence to force their preference onto everyone into a geographic region. They even have a monopoly on law, which is how they do it. You don't allow a polycentric legal system, right? You don't allow these rich, diverse communities that could, that could come about. A community that's 420 friendly, one next door that's not, right? You can have real consent, real tacit agreement, like with your phone company or with your mortgage company or with the, you know, car payments. So what would you see like um, as the optimal substitution for what we have now, like in right. your perfect like view where the like, guess these are I don't held. ascribe to a perfect, I don't want a perfectness, like, mm -hmm. I, like utopia. Or like, you know, the best possible. The best possible way, right, so in solution. our digital lives, we don't use violence to solve problems. Let's start there with first principles, right? Let's move forward and unite our community, turn to our community and turn away from government that already contradicts our moral values, right? That has robbed us of nearly half a percent of our income, right? That's, that's, that's uh, you know, drone bombing children overseas. You don't have that control over the military, right? You can't say you can go bankrupt tomorrow like you try to do with Netflix, right? But you can still have security, you can still have all these agreements, you can still have real tacit consent, right? So that's pretty much where we would start. We start pr try to provide free market services in the area government has monopolized. Like USPS, the monopolization of first class mail, delivering pieces of paper. No one's allowed to compete. UPS and FedEx can only deliver packages because it's illegal for anyone to compete. But that's why USPS is $60 billion in debt. That's why Social Security and other unfunded liability. You're forced to pay for that. You never gave consent, no power of attorney, but still, when it's time for you to recoup, there'll be nothing there for you. So how would you like think like roads and things would happen, like public infrastructure? Because yeah. like, I know a lot of people, I, the general basis of a person is generally you know, self-serving or self-serving for their community. Yeah. And a lot of people won't be willing to, you know, give up their hard-earned dollars sure. for a road that they don't live on right. for the good of, you know, their community. Well, all right, that's a good question because right now you're forced to do that anyways. Yeah. Right? <laughs> you're forced to pay roads in places you've never you know, been that, that's to. That's why right? they're there, though. Right, like, right, right. But, but at the same time, government doesn't build roads. Businesses do. Mm -hmm. People do. Right? Businesses. So government steals their money through taxes and they outsource it to the politically connected, to the lowest common denominator with the lowest quality of goods, which is like it's driving around the moon here in Richmond. Right? You don't have a choice. It's like, look, we've been building roads for 10 years, never had a problem, every pothole filled, just give us a call, we, we fix the lines, we fix the roads. But they get The government um, organizes those contractors to make sure it happens, and it's they more don't. of a, bu a bureaucratic we, thing right. than anything we remove else. The, we remove the middleman, go directly to someone who can provide a better for you. But for the most part though, it will be businesses that want to want to create the roads. They want to, to facilitate then that travel to their that, businesses like, do. Yeah, they, we, they, uh, we need the infrastructure to get the customers businesses in the well. door. It's like, but uh, the businesses aren't making a profit on that. Yeah, they are. Yeah. They're making a profit by creating, they could now advertise, they can make it a fun enjoyable experience you have Google creating uh, cars that could drive by themselves but how does a road generate revenue what is it, a it is the are, they, are they toll roads uh, how do how do power lines make the electricity company money you need the infrastructure there they don't there's make a guy the money it's the, the owner means to an end. the founder of PayPal who's just creating a lot of space bearing projects for now he's investing billions of dollars in his own project to create a supersonic uh, tube We're traveling system frame. right mm -hmm. billions of dollars of his own money yeah. people will find a way people will find incentives Right? People will go crazy. But he's also going to charge people for the yeah, use 20, of Yeah, things. $20. The government has uh, grants monopolies to like Amtrak, for example, so you still have to pay. But the thing is, when there's no monopoly, when there's a free market, there's a lot of people who can compete to provide you better, cheaper services. Right? Yeah, where's my airplane at, dog? Do you have an airplane? I don't have an airplane. Right. I want an airplane. I don't need a road. So that's where's so my airplane. But airplanes aren't a viable uh, means of like everyday transportation. Like, you can't compete yeah. when it comes to roads yeah. because there's then there'll be roads building over roads and then. 
things like it, it just maybe lends itself to well, a lot of perfect. conclusion. Maybe where we're going, it's kind of like when you end the institution of slavery, you can't predict what agriculture would have looked like 100 years later. When you end this institution of violence of government and the way that it monopolized the roads, I don't know what it's going to look like, but it's going to look a lot better than what we have But you now. just said you don't know what it's going to look like. It's going to look a lot better. Just like you end the institution of slavery, you have all these technologies. I think I don't think you can equate slavery, which is a very well, moral and like human, humanitarian thing, to like the slavery? constructions of you know, roads. Well, so because then you're equating that uh, without slavery, without like uh, tax slaves, who's going to build the roads? It's like without slaves, who's going to pick the cotton? People will. If you don't force them, at yeah. Point, who's going to work minimum wage? Well, jobs, they, they have like the people building the roads have the choice to you know work in the same it. people who build the roads will be building the roads. They'll just provide a better service. So now, now you can have quality of competition. All right. Right. Now there's a lot. Now you have like uh, like when you go to a mall, there's like all these t-shirt businesses. Now there's like all these businesses. We can provide better roads. But the thing, what happens now in a free market, the opposite occurs when there's when there's no monopoly now. Now the cost continues to go down and quality continues to improve. Right. Like cell phones, like uh, memory cards. Right. They cost like you know. A couple like 40, 50 bucks, you know, for like four gigabytes, you know, a couple of years ago. I could buy like, you know, 32 gigabytes for like 10 bucks, right? Yeah. But that's because of competition, right? And, and quality continues to improve. Plasma screen TVs cost thousands of dollars a couple of years ago. Now you can buy a better version for a few hundred bucks, right? But that's because there's competition. When government monopolizes these services, there's no competition. No one's allowed to compete. And so we're stuck with it then. You don't have the freedom to say, hey, I could provide something better. There's this uh, business in, uh, in Europe, for example, that's created this machine that can lay down brick roads, right? So it removes the labor, removes a lot of the costs that are associated with it. Um, you know, you'll find a lot of different ways that we can find creative solutions. Like mass transit in Detroit has shut down. There's this guy, 25 year old college dropout, bought these four buses to reflect the geographic regions of Detroit. And these buses will pick you up wherever you are. Call them, text them. There's no politically centralized planning routes. And at the same time, in these buses, there's music on there, there's Wi-Fi, there's BYOB, because there's no longer a monopoly in law to be enforced. Right? That's interesting. Yeah. So it just frees up a lot of great creative ways that we kind of put our plans together. Not one person is going to have a solution. You end the state monopoly, you liberate billions of creative ideas to kind of put forth, to provide you, to match your preference, to meet your needs. Yeah, I got a flying saucer behind the park around the circle. It's problem. Yeah, flying cars is actually debuting in 2015. Right? Yeah. The free market made that. <laughs> right? So I don't know what it's going to look like. Maybe when you end the, the monopoly on this sort of stuff, maybe we won't need any more roads by that time. Maybe where we're going, there are no roads. And then if you look at the why, if you look at innovation over the past 50 years, and it's boomed, but I think the statistic was like 78% of all medical and technological innovations were made by the American or other war machines for the purpose of killing people and we just happen to find some nice other uses for them. Right. And so that's kind of the driving force, like the capitalist immoral thing is actually driving this boom of like invention. Right. Uh, well, see, now you don't have a choice where your money can be going to that particular research in R&D. You don't have that freedom of economic choice to decide you where you want to allocate. You think people will invest in just R&D projects that really yeah, have... Like, if, yeah, if you don't have to spend millions of dollars in lobbying government do, to have man. special privileges for people over a competitive edge, that goes back into R&D. Yeah, I mean, most of the businesses out there create these products for the government. So the government no doesn't build anything. Mm -hmm. They outsource it to Boeing, to Raytheon, and to North Bank Grown Up. It's private businesses in the private sector. It's not the government so. doing it. The, 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 the point is the money funding them. Yeah. Like the millions of dollars yeah. funding them that would probably Sorry, otherwise man. not be given to them by private citizens just because okay, the crowdsourcing for that would have to be Kickstarter massive. campaigns. Or you can, yeah, there'll, be, there'll still be philanthropists. There'll still be non-profit organizations. You look at uh, Car Carnegie. What's Carnegie Hall, for example. He donated over 2,000 libraries of his own money. 2,000 libraries even to the public sector. I know, right? He created this stuff. People will create this stuff. Right? People will become creative, non-violent solutions again. Right? And that's how we can go forward. That's how we can finally get off this rock. Right? Yeah. What did they say? Red Bull has a better space program than NASA now? Mm, yeah. Right? That's where we'll find uh, a lot more technology, a lot more stuff we can't even fathom or think about. 
Yeah. Now there'd be no Monsanto, no so, patent trolling companies. Uh, uh, there'd be no intellectual property rights. Right. All that is, again, is a uh, government monopoly that allows you to build this particular product like and no one else is allowed but to do it. But it's also an incentive for people to build things because they will receive direct well, benefits so from the like fruits of their I'm labors satisfied. versus if you don't have intellectual property, if I come up with this brilliant design that can, you know, feed the entire population yeah. of the world, hypothetically. Sure. And that could, like, it should be given away. Like, it should yeah. be, you know, used for everybody. Sure. But the creator of that should, you know, receive some profit from it because, yeah, you, you know. Yeah, you market it, you start a Kickstarter campaign. But then, but if there's no intellectual property, yeah, well, as soon as someone else gets a hold of his like formula, you, well, they can make the same thing and he gets nothing from uh, okay, it. So okay. why would you so what ends up, excel? Right, so what ends up happening, though, is like, so by the time they figure out the formula, you just create a version point two. They can't keep up. What they still need to get all the scientists. Like penicillin. Like there is no point two. Do you know how to reverse engineer this? No. You're gonna have to. You have to hire a lot of engineers. You have a lot of money to invest in that. It takes a lot of time to but reverse that's, engineer. That's why capitalism. That's why I, right. like people would be on top of that though. Like, right. Without those. By the things time they, they can't. Of course, they're this, gonna try to make money off someone else's. All right. Idea. So look like people know the difference between a knockoff Gucci bag and the actual thing, right? People know. People will want the authentic thing. People can hear like a remix of a song, but I still would want to hear more stuff from the original artist. I always still want to support that because you know you created this awesome creative stuff. I want to keep supporting your, your I don't know your wild, crazy cr creative imagination. And, but in the stuff. same way that like the Beach Boys ripped off a ton of like old blues songs and sure. made them theirs, and no one really remembers the original blues artist, but yeah. no, the Beach Boys version. So they get all the glory and credit for those. I, that's what I see like happening. So the, the little guy will still get stepped on. Well, like you're, the little guy will, unless you have a system to prevent the little guy from getting stepped on, right. he will. Well, I mean, the problem then with intellectual property rights, it's not a, it's not real property. It's not scarce, right? It's not a scarce resource. It exists to say words out there, to put things on a piece of paper and people can see that. It's like seeing you mow your lawn in a certain way. I look over my fence. It's like, wow, I like that particular procedure or that circular movement you have. I'm gonna, I like to copy it too. But at the same time, I can't match your tacit knowledge. I can't match the experience you have in creating that. The best I could do is try to mimic it. Right, but then you have like this perfection way of this, this knowledge that no one else has. That's where you. That's where people will come to you, right? Those that business that's trying to maybe copy your thing. They'll say, "Why don't we just hire him?" <laughs> yeah, and that saves us a lot of time. <laughs> and then there you go. You have all the the, the, the capital investment to, to to put this out all over the world, mm -hmm. right? But the reverse of that happening is you have a lack of creative music. Up. You have a lot of creative stuff because now they can't because they have to uh, pay a lot of patents. They have to pay a lot of. You know, for example, no one's allowed to build a phone. Yo, that's wrong bring for the us. havoc, man! Right. And <laughs> Apple in the beginning didn't want to get involved and in, in going uh, filing for patents, but they were starting to get sued because government created this, this stuff with the in the first place. Like the Wright brothers when they created the planes, how come we don't hear a lot of like new planes that came out of that? They got stuck and embroiled in a lot of lawsuits. Right, with IP, with uh, patent, with patent lawsuits with the United States government. So that's you know that's stopping the limit. You know, instead of seeing all this new stuff that could have came out, uh, the legal aspect of it, the monopoly and law, preventing that from happening. Yeah, well, I gotta actually run. Yeah, yeah. My name it's is Cal. It's been fantastic talking absolutely, to you. You have some really interesting ideas. Thank you. Thank you. I got some pamphlets if you like. Sure. Yeah. All right. Cool. I'm a journalism major, so you know I've I've seen you out here before. I haven't, <laughs> had, I haven't had to ask yet, but you know. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad I did. Yeah. Well, take good care, man. Yeah, man. Good luck. Thanks. Saying government has monopoly on information. You're saying that he doesn't. Please start All your. Right, let's do this. The question is, you have to prove. Closer, closer. Get in the shot. Yep. There. You, you have to prove that the government doesn't have a monopoly on information. Well, the onus is on you to prove to me that government exists. Oh, wait, wait. So you're saying that the only reason he knows anything is because of the government? Exactly. Well, I'm just sure. Because you went through an education system made by the government. And I've been dumbed down by it. I've been. Uh, but what is your definition of intelligence? Because intelligence originates from education, which originates from the government. Actually, uh, intelligence, uh, the capacity to want to learn, is innate. It's not something that someone gives you. It's not something that any person gives you. Ah, but you're give born you. into. You're born a wanting to learn. That then gives you that inspiration to learn. I was born you into. You see, learning necessarily means the government giving you information. That's what the definition of learning is. The government's trying because to Because we presuppose that the up. government is the source of information. All they've done is throw a lot necessary. of misinformation at me. 
well, what's the definition of misinformation? But things that the government doesn't say. You see, information therefore is what comes from the government. Yeah, Isn't misinformation government is only definition. what the government disagrees with. Government? Exactly. All right, great, great. So, so let's deal with government. Here's a way to circumnavigate this. Uh, show me that government exists. Who's who's teaching me this stuff? Some individual, some fool? That are uh, allowed? The government is a body. Yeah, we just need to worship the prison program. Show me, show me, show me. Worship the prison program. Show me the government. Uh, show me the government. Uh, it's we for your safety, man. I'm the government? You are the government. <laughs> this, <laughs> yeah, this whole time, yeah. I was my own government the whole time? <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. You, 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 never you, you, you can never got prove your own self. Wow. It's like, uh, you were the princess the whole time. <laughs> Inception. But what is the definition of government but a uh, system group of, of people. education that betters the world? That's what government is. It's for mankind's progress. Exactly. Government to is beyond, mankind's progress. You it's it's a humanitarian effort. To decivilization. See, we can do this for like the hours end justifies on end the means, will, doesn't yeah, it? Oh, the, the best way. So the best way you, you end these kind of discussions but is, you well, you know what? Um, is it not well, better to be feared than love? You can't rationalize with irrational people. Ah, oh, but then we have to define what reason is. Reason you can't show me the onus is on you to prove to me that government exists. I think you're There's irrational. There's no government in me. You're irrational by rejecting. See, you already know that the government is correct. You're just denying Stock it because syndrome. you want Takes to be rebellious. Right. All right. Look at the camera and okay. say, this troll session has been brought to you by VCU <laughs> Anarchy. Thank you. Well, Indeed. hold on now. Yeah. Think about some literary uh, and some scholarly sources, such as Thomas, uh, I think it's Thomas Smith's, or... I don't, Thomas what, the, what, Thomas, Thomas Hobbes, well, Thomas doesn't, Paine, Thomas Hobbes, Tom, uh, Adam Smith, is. that's it, Adam Smith, The Wealth of Nations, uh, let's see, there's also, he's also the, a free market well, anarchist, a Machiavelli, yeah. um, isn't it not better to be feared than loved? You don't, the, the key is you don't, it doesn't well, matter so what you're saying, are you, you saying just I should, challenging every Is that definition. how my relationship with That's my girlfriend should be? You do You define with everything fear with your own definition Is that your relationship with your mother so and your friends? You. But you. That's how the government works a lot of the time, so, does it not? Uh, but there's, yeah, uh, they know yeah, how favorite. these things are, they know uh, these people and their works. You think they and yet, the, it, it is said that the end justifies the means and that because somebody is doing something, for themselves or for one thing, like so one yeah, particular so like, thing, like the government, uh, that it'll somehow second. affect the other people. It'll affect the people that are um, that are having problems in society. It'll help um, so either remove them like from like basically the equation you in terms of that's what I thought. You know, for the better good, for the greater good, or oh, right, it will. Right. Well, then that's fine, but you can't claim to be good because be good, has to be, oh, good has to be universalized. It's a preface. Uh, the utilitarian no, argument, the greatest good for the majority is also the greatest yeah, evil for the minority. So it's, you can't claim the lesser evil. But you can't claim more authority. The contradiction of uh, places can't be existing at the same time. Something that's good for you has to be good for all people. Something that's bad for you has to be bad for all people. Universalized. I mean, so therefore, it's the greatest right? preference wow, forced onto the minority. I can't say half anymore. Uh, so and that's what exists. The government can't claim moral authority. Papers. Can't claim to be good. It's, so then, that's why yeah, well, laws then, when which they claim to be perfect, morally right? just and universally applicable to everyone, then great, we can use that to say, yeah, well, if it's wrong for everyone to steal, except they'll call it taxes for themselves. It's funny how the Constitution so, yeah, says is, that the, the minority uh, the should not be ignored or that they should be uh, respected. It's funny and because the, the the Constitution was, is not an actual contract, yeah. and they they shouldn't have said it. They should have just said it's a um, that's so a social idealistic document yeah and they didn't even have the, the consent of the minority they didn't talk to the children they didn't talk to black people they didn't talk to the women they didn't talk to people who didn't own land they only talked to a very tiny select few that was inside of their own circle and said well we grant each other consent all right that's good enough Look, for us so <laughs> such a random view that it was literally within the same town or even within the same building yeah but yet at the time that they made the document they didn't have the sort of communication or transportation or anything like that that they do today. right so they can't claim that it's a uh, legit contract right they're in the early 37 of them signed it anyways not all of them <laughs> so it's impartial and complete <laughs> um, well then again like society is sort of incomplete uh, where we're at right now because it's a work in progress we have not gotten 
to the highest level that we can. Oh, and if, if, if anyone has, they're either like on the top of a mountain somewhere or they're dead because that's basically yeah. the, uh, the full circle truth of it all for right now anyway. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's, it's kind of fun trying to disprove ourselves. So that's the hidden bias behind this matrix, behind government, that this organization only knows how to solve problems in one way, a singular way, and that's through the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems. Versus already the plurality, though, of nonviolent solutions that you and I already share. Nonviolent solutions don't tend to work on global scales. I mean, throughout history, it seems as though governments, monarchies have all solved things through violence. And for that to change, incredibly difficult because we as humans seem to be kind of set in our ways, well, especially our leadership. What uh, what have they solved the violence? What have they solved through violence? That they not create themselves, right? Like wars, like uh, genocide. What do you consider solving? Well, well, you, you mentioned to me that government has solved like monarchies through violence. So I'm asking what, what areas of examples are you uh, <laughs> referring to? What has been solved through war? Through violence. Yeah. Through violence. I don't think solved is the word I want to use now. <laughs> Not solved, but it's... Yeah, well, come closer, come closer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Wow, that's a good question. <laughs> right? And, and, and the, the areas that the government says that they give away or try to create, uh, we forget that the, the funding for that came from other people's property, came from other people's money, came from other people's productivity and happiness, right? Like, uh, so we want to say, like, maybe government creates roads, but they don't. They steal everyone's money and they give it to businesses to build it in the first place. Right, it's businesses and people who build this stuff. So government then is like the middleman of that. Instead of you having direct access to the service or have the freedom to compete against those monopolized services the government has. But I'm step taking another step further. You say they steal people's money. You think taxes, taxes. are stealing? Right. I mean, uh, if you don't pay, it's not voluntary. It's not consensual. Right. Uh, so violence will be defined as placing a person in an involuntary position without their consent or choice. I rape, murder, theft, and assault. Right. Taxes is not consensual. If you don't pay your taxes, you're thrown into a cage. Yes. You don't have the freedom of economic opportunity to say, you know what? Uh, so the areas the government has monopolized, like courts, judges, security, roads, currency, uh, first-class mail. You don't have a freedom to cancel, unsubscribe, even have the freedom then to compete against those monopolized services to provide a better service that's not going to be harmful and abusive to you, the consumer. But the, the services that they provide, could we do ourselves? Yes. If you have competition, then you have free market. Like all the areas the government has not monopolized, those are voluntary and consensual, right? Areas the government has monopolized, like social security, you never agreed to that. You never gave consent. You never signed your name on anything before you were born. But you're forced to have the service. You're forced to pay for it, and you'll never have it when it's time for you to retire. You are free to leave the country. Uh, to where? To another tax farm? To another cage? Where in what country doesn't collect taxes? Right, and that's, and that's the thing. That's the whole matrix of the entire world, that the globe, that, that there's nothing but tax farms. There's just a lot of these different forms of tyranny, all the different forms of government trying to control people's lives. They don't allow free markets. We don't have a free market. We have a state-controlled market, right? I guess so. Whoa. But what, so would that, be, so what would be your ideal the idea, system? Okay, okay. Uh, well, we'll come closer. I'm not... I'm, I'm, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the ideal system is that not one person has the idea on how best everything works, right? You have a free market, you liberate the world, you liberate billions of I have ideas to find creative solutions to these problems, right? Not one person has the solution. That's what government does though, right? We have the solution to Medicare, Obamacare. Not everyone's already dropping their insurance plans, Did the right? people not vote on that? Uh, did people what not about, vote for people but what who about, voted on What about that? the people who do not want to participate? Now at the same time, you're still having that preference forced onto you, right? Even if you participate or not. And that's the problem with it. And that's what happens uh, with politicians. They force the preference onto everyone into a geographic region, whether they want it or not, like cannabis. You don't have the freedom to disassociate or associate. You don't have the freedom to have pluralities of rich communities with different catering to preferences saying, this one's 420 friendly, I'm gonna to move to one that's not, or vice versa. You can have different rules outside of their monopoly of law. I guess, right? that would be difficult. 
Yeah, yeah, well, it starts off with first principles. Like you just told me before, like in your day-to-day -day life, you don't use violence to solve your personal problems, yeah. right? So we have to universalize that principle. You know, that's like, uh, universalize like the theory of gravity, universalize the theory of the thermodynamics, uh, the laws of nature, universalize the principle that it's wrong and immoral for anyone to initiate that violence. No matter what title you hold, what color your costume you're wearing, uh, what piece of paper or piece of metal you hold up, it doesn't matter who you are, it's wrong and immoral for anyone to initiate that force, right? So you apply that even to government, but government, uh, it's by, by its very nature, um, involves itself in that. It's the only way it can function by initiating violence. So you're saying violence solves nothing. Right. But to some people, they don't see violence as wrong. Say a murderer. Sure, or yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody yeah. who's assaulted. But how would you stop that person right. without right. using violence? Okay, all right. Uh, well, I mean, you can, sorry, there's self defense. You can act in self defense. You're not initiating. Self defense is self preservation of your own body from the initiation of that violence, right? Like, Just the initiation of violence is wrong. Um, none of the consensual aspect, like in boxing, no? Nothing below the waist, no ear body Mike Tyson, and then we can box. But that's consent, right? The other areas that's not consensual is like the force the monopolized uh, services of security government has. You don't have the freedom to cancel, unsubscribe, cancel a payment plan. From the police? Right. Or even have, the, right, because you're so forced to pay for the police. You don't have the freedom to compete against the police force and say, you know what, I could provide a better service. It's not going to throw people into cages for victimless crimes. Right? So you think that there should be a private owned police force? Yeah. By the government? Yes. Free market everything. Well, you, these already exist. Like when you go to a mall, there's a guy in the Segway with the helmet providing he security. He doesn't have a gun. Uh, a lot of them are not allowed to because of state laws. A lot of them are not allowed to because of the regulations that pre prevents them from having access to that. Um, so again, it's a state controlling the market, controlling what we can and cannot do. But you go to a nightclub, there's bounces there, there's security, there's rules before you go in, no assholes allowed pretty much, right? You go to Disney World, there's security there. Right? And a lot of this stuff you don't really pay for. Right? You go to Starbucks, they offer free internet. Right? So you find up free market solutions to, to provide nonviolent answers to, to these problems to meet our needs. Right? That would, yes, I agree with you. That would work. Yeah. If only. Well, that's where, that's where we have to start, right? Uh, by first principle. Uh, look at objectively uh, the nature of what government is and turn away from that. Let's turn to our community. Let's unite with these principles, unite with these values that we already share. So those values have been lost a very long time ago. That's true. I believe for this society that you want to happen, we'd have to care about what it is. We do. You're right. Empathy is very important. I understand it. Um, and that's why government, that's the last thing government wants us to find out. That we actually use a real voice. We actually use, it's not a piece of, they want to say it's a piece of paper, Chad, it's a lever they use every four years. Years. They're afraid we actually use a real voice. We can reach out to one another. We can connect. And we realize that we share the same values against violence. That we share the same values for equality, for freedom. Then we actually started talking to one another. We realized we never needed government to begin with. Right? To reach out to our own community here in Richmond. But within all of those separate communities, there would be nothing above them. Yeah, nothing above them. Yeah. It would be small governing bodies. It would be small areas. I guess it wouldn't be governing bodies. It'd be like. Like a golf course community, right? I want to move. There's a homeowners association. They build the roads. They maintain security. You just have a lot of rich, awesome communities. You can have an again. Say I do something in one community, yeah. and then I run to the other one. Can well, the people from my community chase me into that community. So what ends up happening? So you do something in your own community. You consent to the consequences of the rules, yes. right? Uh, so you're not upholding your contract. No one's going to uphold their contract with you. Why would they? You seem like a distrustful person, not upholding the ends of your contract if you were to like, aggress against another person and you were to escape from paying restitution, right? All the other communities will be notified. And this stuff kind of already works like on eBay. A person offers a fast service, they're socially ostracized, rated down. Uh, someone puts out a bad app that nobody likes on, on Apple, they're rated down. Uh, and social ostracism becomes the best form of self-defense against would-be aggressors. Now where are you gonna go? But that wouldn't work there because say I robbed a bank in one community yeah and I go to another who's one. gonna let you in that community who's gonna let you in right who's gonna stop me who's gonna stop you they have security too you're one person I was like hey look I'm gonna contact all these security companies be on the lookout for this person yeah I mean businesses you know make contract agreements AT&T has like the guy who has contract agreements with Allstate and even my person hits your person's car another car over you let's have this agreement let's talk it over you're never really involved but they figure it out they still have dispute resolutions they still have ways to kind of resolve conflict it's like good, like good luck trying to, to run away there's a lot of now you don't have just one defense you don't have one police you have thousands of different ways that people can provide defense thousands of different ways to provide security but 
what happens when a certain group of people get together and they want to impose their will upon others or they want to impose their rules upon others. I think that's how government will start. Right. Uh, well, the, then the thing is, those group of people are not just facing uh, one military. They're facing thousands of defense forces. Would one giant military well, not be better than thousands of smaller ones? Uh, so you find this like even historically, like when Napoleon tried to take over Europe, all the surrounding nations united against them, pushed them back. Uh, when Spain tried to do the same thing, when uh, England tried to do the same thing, you know, they find different areas where everyone does unite and defeat those large forces. And so in the event that one person wants to try to do that, go for it. But the thing about trying to create a war is very costly. In a free and voluntary society, there's no taxes. You need taxes to have a standing army, right? Yeah. Without taxes, there's no standing armies. It becomes too expensive, right? Because you can drop a bomb overseas, sir, because you have taxes. You, you can keep creating those bombs. But our taxes aren't only going towards negative things. I'm sure we uh, pay for some things uh, within our taxes that are benefiting us. Like what? Roads. Businesses build roads, remember? I can't. <laughs> <laughs> people don't build roads. People build roads. Government doesn't build us to begin with. They, so they're pretty much, they rob you of the opportunity to, to see who can provide you a best system of roads. They rob you of the opportunity for even you to compete and say, hey, I can provide. Who would pay for the roads then? Uh, people will, you already do. But, uh, but at least now you have nearly half of your income return, right? That's not stolen from you. At least you'll be 75% uh, richer because now all of these restrictions will be removed from you being able to compete. Uh, and for the most part, though, businesses will build roads. They have more of a cost incentive for you to travel to go to their stores. So a lot of businesses will get together and say, hey, let's, uh, let's, form, a, let's form a road company. I want customers to come to our mall, right? Even malls have their own little roads that they build in, in the surrounding areas. Okay. I can work. Right? And advertisement, and you'll find a lot of rich, awesome, creative ways to kind of solve these problems. So you believe in anarchy? Free market anarchism, yeah. Free market anarchism. So like anarchy by definition, like in science, anons and cations, an means without, archy means rulers. Like monarchy, one political ruler, anarchy means without political rulers. You can still have rules, we just don't need a monopoly on law that government forces on us, right? Okay. You never gave consent to, you never signed, you know, gave um, your name on a piece of paper. The constitution is not a contract, right? You never agreed to the social security. You never agreed to like all the number of numerous ways of increases or taxes that you're forced to pay for, right? You know, you don't have that economic freedom to choose. You have a certain amount of economic freedom. You can still, you know. Well, well you're either free or you're not, right? I guess. You can't be partially free. You can't, you have to, you have, to have all freedom, free or you're not, because then, then that small little aspect of it is what, what created this government to, to begin with, right? In the very beginning, it was a very small, limited form of government. But that one exception to that violence to government has increased to the size of the Leviathan where it is today. But yeah. I'd want to. I, I think it's in human nature to be selfish. Like you were saying, sure, yeah, Napoleon. Yeah, yeah. Napoleon wanted to conquer everything. Right. And you know, what happens when we are in the society and we have another Napoleon who's able to maybe congregate? certain amount of groups in order to take over groups eventually well i guess you can't uh there's no tax system to take over like the only reason hitler wanted to take over france was to take over the tax system to help fund his war machine no government no tax system for anyone to take over china if they wanted to invade is no longer just facing the united states military they're facing like hundreds of thousands of communities with their own form of self-defense that's very costly to go through there, there's no incentive because nobody believes in taxes anymore. They see it and recognize it what it is. They see the matrix. They see that it's really theft. They're not tricked into believing it's called something else. And that's how government exists. They, they have, to, have to trick people in that language. Right? So let's say it's wrong for you to steal, we'll call it taxes. It's wrong for you to murder, but we'll call it organized war. You know, they'll call it a war on drugs, but I've never seen a you know, cannabis leaf handcuffed and thrown into a cage. It's people. It's a war on people. So they hide the true nature of the relationship through language, right? Yes. So that's when people recognize and see these things for objectively for what they are, this power starts to go away, right? Yes. So once people see that, it will never come back. It's like, I don't need a political ruler, <laughs> right? I'm not your tax cattle. That's assuming that everybody would want a society like that. Like if our government just stopped functioning, which it did. But if it just stopped protecting us, there would be people in our society who would take advantage of that, who would take advantage of other people and would take advantage of that situation. Okay, so you can look at uh, Detroit. If it filed for bankruptcy, it takes over an hour for the police to respond to 911 calls. There's this guy uh, who created a threat management system, business service, and some providing securities for this neighborhood, and the crime rates have dropped down. That's legal? Well, because the, the monopoly law is hard to enforce now. 
my government has, has gone down, so they don't have really, they're not really capable of doing much of anything. So, but this guy created his own security company, not throwing anyone into cages for victimless crimes. Crime rates have dropped down, and these neighborhoods are voluntarily paying for that service, and it's cheaper, oh. safer, right? I agree with you, man. You yeah, have some really good <laughs> ideas. All right, man. Thank it's pleasure to meet you. Well, let me give you some pamphlets before. Uh, what is this for? Just uh, it's for uh, I have I'm part of an organization called Liberate RBA, Liberate Our Community from the idea that violence is so free. It's a non political organization and just pretty much uh, trying to implement these ideas in my Thank you. Yeah, man. Take good care.